Good, oh, good morning, Robbinsdale Parkway United Church of Christ. Good morning. You feel very far away, but that's okay. I, I love the shady group over there. That's awesome. Uh, this is Pentecost Sunday, and this is a miracle that happens in the life of the church. It's like the birthday of the church. It's the very beginning of what it means to come together, and and a miracle happens in the midst of that because all of a sudden. People from different parts of the world, people have, with di different experience, people have been through a lot of transformation and angst um, in an occupied land, all of a sudden get together and they understand each other. And, and the, it's just amazing. And that, that's the miracle is that 
throughout languages and cultural barriers, they really understood why they were gathered. And we hope that today you get an understanding of why you gather, why it's important to be church and to, to move through this life as one. Um, and it, it is, I think, a great miracle all the time to find that, you know, we come from different backgrounds, different experiences, but to really understand that we are in this together and that that's what we're called always into that community. Um, I'm Reverend T. Michael Rock, by the way, and with Reverend Kathy Itson, we are the pastors of this amazing congregation, and we welcome you. Um, and we always uh, try to dedicate our worship to those who are visiting with, with us today, and we know there are visitors among us, and so welcome especially to you. Um, we know that we're in the midst of people who are joining the church, and so welcome especially to you as you discern what that means for you as well. Um, this uh, week is um, another one of those busy weeks in the life of the church as we prepare. We're doing a little transition now. We're having worship out here the fourth beautiful Sunday in a row outside. Um, next week, we're going to go all recorded as we try to transition our building, our space into uh, in-person worship on January or June 6th. So not January, June 6th. Uh, so next week is only at home recorded. And the following week, we will be uh, live in person in the building, in the sanctuary uh, for all of us to worship in there. Part of that is that um, because we are not all vaccinated, because we're still in the world of a pandemic, there are still people getting sick and dying from COVID-19. Um, we are going to ask people to wear masks uh, during that inside experience. Outside, the mandates has lifted, and obviously not a lot of folks are wearing masks, and that's fine for those of you who do and don't in this space. Uh, but when we come inside, we want to make sure we're being as safe as possible for as many people as possible, especially those who are vulnerable and our young people who haven't been accessed to vaccines yet or just beginning to become access to vaccines. So uh, please be aware of that as well. This week... Um, I hope and pray that all of our hearts are open and breaking in some way this week. Um, this is the one year anniversary of George Floyd's murder in, uh, on 30th in Chicago. And people will be gathering all over the world and, and people from the world are coming to Minneapolis to walk and march today and tomorrow and Tuesday. Tuesday's the actual anniversary. Um, I'm wearing the Black Lives Matter t-shirt in honor of that time. I will be there on Tuesday. If you have a compulsion to be present in community on those days, please let me know and we'll find a way to get you involved in that. But to, to have our hearts be open to that experience this week, um, the world is looking on us um, in the Twin Cities as, as our compassion reaches out to not just George Floyd's family, but all those who have been infected by um, systemic violence on behalf of those in power, right? And so as a church who always stands on the side of the oppressed, we are always going to be in that space to provide a compassion and care for, for folks who are experiencing that ongoing violence. So a lot of people are gathering this week to, to share their grief, to share their stories, and our hearts are with you. Um, the other announcement I have is that uh, as we get back together as community, as church, um, we've been invited to be together outside to have a picnic. Um, to get, uh, and we'd like to, this to happen hopefully all summer long. Different times we can get, gather outside to experience our community, and we've been invited to uh, Patty McDonald's Sons Farm in Wisconsin. All the information is on our Facebook site um, to sign up to RSVP and to show up for this wonderful day uh, on June 5th, the Saturday before we're, we're together uh, at the farm, right? So join us. Is that clear enough? Great. And lastly, today we welcome especially the confirmation students and their families. Um, I have learned tons from these kids. I'll talk a little bit about that more later. And for those of you who are um, a little bit uh, confused about how this is a little different than other confirmation times, we are in the midst of a, a years, years long journey of transforming the separating membership from confirmation. So we did membership for these kids when they were fourth and fifth grade. Um, they're members of the church. And because they felt like they belonged, they, they, were, they were here, and we, we, they went through that process. This is about kind of their, their sense of belonging and connection to, to who we are. This, this is, this is a, a heart-centered place um, and not so much in, in your head. And so we've kind of separated those things. It's a rich experience for these kids, hopefully, and we get to teach each other intergenerational experience. So 
Um, that's what you're witnessing today, and we're really honored and thrilled that they are here um, to experience that with us. Okay? So, uh, Kathy, I think, is going to lead our joys and concerns and prayers, and so come on up. All the way from the shade. All right, thank you. Um, I'm Kathy Etson, co-pastor with T. Michael, and we're so happy to see everybody on the Confirmation Sunday, Pentecost. It's a big day for us. Um, I think T. Michael also would want us to know, all of us, um, Carol Algren had passed away, as he announced last Sunday. The funeral has been um, decided. It will be at 1 o'clock on sa Saturday, June 12th, for Carol Algren. So you may want to come to that. And that's, I'm assuming, here, yep. indoors. Yes, yep. okay. Um, so we'll pray for her family and Mark especially. What else, who else, what other situations shall we pray for today? How about our confirmation young men and women? People. And non-binary people. Our, and non-binary, that's what I was saying. I was saying that. And non-binary people. Yes. So for those of you who may not have heard, for the families, especially of the three children that were killed on the north side in the last three weeks who were shot at ridiculous, like playing at a, outside at a birthday party. I mean, um, so we want to pray for them and for the violence, the systemic violence that's happening on the north side and everywhere else and that people do what they can, whatever that is and whatever ways to work against that kind of a mindset. What else? Palestine, Israel, India, yeah. Military personnel. Military personnel and their families, absolutely. And I think many times, especially for those who are deployed or being deployed and living apart and worrying about each other and all of that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the which immigrants? The peace process. Oh, the peace process in Israel. Yes, absolutely. What else? Didn't hear you. Which is, can you tell us for everybody? The missing and murdered and indigenous women. Yep, that's a big thing. Um, we are one of the worst states for that, and the reason is because we have Duluth with the uh, ports, the twin ports up there. And it's very difficult when an indigenous woman is missing because it's like, is it Minnesota? Is it Wisconsin? Is it a ship from another country? Is it international waters? It's like, it's, it's a hard thing for them to sort out in terms of who has the authority, and it's, um, that's just one of the reasons. But Minnesota is sadly very high in that. What else? All right. All of these things are very important. We'll keep them in mind as we continue to pray for this service and throughout the next several days. Tracy Flugel. All right. Yes, Tracy Flugel. That's good. Please uh, join me in the call to worship, the brazen body and s or spirit. The journey of faith is a journey, journey through, through life. life. We, are we are pilgrims, pilgrims travelers, travelers making, making our way. way. We, we sojourn, sojourn on the pathway of the saints. saints. We, walk we walk the same highway and follow the same landmarks with them. them. But, but for, for each generation, generation in, in each, each place, place and time, and for each seeker who travels this way, the road, the road does, does seem, seem different. different. Today, Today we, we celebrate tomorrow's leaders, the heroes of a history yet to be made. We hold out our hands to them 
and beckon them to join us on the journey. As they walk beside us, we may tell them our stories, but we may not tell them to way. This is a quest they must follow by themselves. We can tell them of our questions, but the answers must come from within their own hearts. We celebrate a new generation of faith, a new branch with its leaves about to blossom. Let us all make a place for them and let them know that the family of Christ and the family of Robbinsdale Parkway, United Church of Christ, is their family too. As we worship and praise God together, let us all listen to their wisdom and grace. Right here. Just put it in there. Thank you. You are God's people. Ready? Yeah. Three, three, four. Come and join with us. We're united in the Church of Christ. Come now, all people, join in the song. Come be a part of the family of God. We are God's people, and you belong. Share in the joy of Christ. You are welcome here, no matter who you are, no matter where you are. On life's journey, you are welcome here, no matter who you are, come and join with us, we're united in the Church of Christ, we pray for justice, we pray for peace, we hear the word of the Savior all along, we find God's mercy, we find release, Sharing the joy of Christ, you are welcome here. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, on life's journey, you are welcome here. No matter who you are, come and join with us. We're united in the Church of Christ. Lifting each other, doing what's right, standing together, whatever may come, praising our Savior, shining our light, sharing the joy of Christ. You are welcome here, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, on life's journey, you are welcome here. No matter who you are, come and join with us. We're united in the church of Christ. Lifting each other, doing what's right. Standing together, whatever may come. Praising our Savior, shining our light. Sharing the joy of Christ. You are welcome here. No matter who you are. No matter where you are, on life's journey, you are welcome here. No matter who you are, come and join with us. We're united in the Church of Christ. Our lives are a journey, and the road goes on and goes ever on. It's a road that began with our birth, that winds its way through meadows and mountains, that crosses rivers and canyons. For the bread that has sustained us on our journey, and the guides who have led us along the way, we offer thanks and praise. We give, we give thanks, thanks for, for the, the grace that, that has brought us to this place. place. 
We pray for those whose journey ends mere moments after it has begun. We pray for those who do not have strength to travel on. We pray for those whose path seems to continually wind back upon itself, spiraling through poverty, pain, prison, prison of soul, or mind, or body. We pray for those whose path coils with fear and ignorance until joy and power and life itself are gone. We pray for our own times of wandering, waiting, and wanting. In the landscape of your abounding love, we know there are paths leading into tomorrows yet unfathomed. We know there are days ahead when all our children shall walk upon a green and fruitful earth. A place where we are unafraid of war or want. A place where pain and loss are windows to our growing spirit. A place that has no place for self selfishness. Help us to shape such a world. Let our paths not be narrow and self-preoccupied. Let us build broad highways where all may walk together in beauty, tending to the gardens along the way. May our lives be the bridge of connection, courage, and love. As we journey on through pleasure and pain, commitment and betrayal, plenty and want, keep us mindful that we do not walk alone. Help us remember that you are the presence of peace in our midst. That in Jesus of Nazareth, you came and shared our common lot. That you walk beside us and dance ahead of us into the future. That the gift we share is in our changing ways. Deliver us, we pray, from the mire of grudges and regrets. Deliver us, we pray, from our separateness and sin. Let us break through into the loving arms of God, spread for each of us mercy and acceptance. All, All these, these things we pray in the name of Jesus, whose story brings life in the midst of death, healing where there is pain, hope where there is despair, justice where there is oppression, and love at all times. Amen. Fill me, Lord, light a flame in me. Fill me, Lord, only with your power will my life be all that it can be. I can meet any challenge that had comes along. Fill me with your power, Lord. In the hand of God I am mighty and strong. Fill me with your power, Lord. I can face a giant with a sling and stone. If I just remember I am not alone. Fill me with your power, Lord. Fill me with your power, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Fill me with your power. Fill me, Lord. Light a flame in me. Only with your power will my life be all that it can be. Through the voice of my neighbor comes a call from above. Fill me with your power, Lord. Will I answer with silence or answer with love? Fill me with your power, Lord. Let me offer all that I have to be. Let me serve with joy every day I live. Fill me with your power, Lord. Fill me with your power, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Fill me with your power. Fill me, Lord. Light a flame in me. Fill me, Lord. Only with your power will my life be all that it can be. Let us work together in the spirit we share. Fill me with your power, Lord. Let us join in action as we join in prayer. Fill me with your power, Lord. There is every reason to rejoice today. We can claim the power and we're on our way. Fill me with your power, Lord. Fill me with your power, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. 
light of flame indeed. Tell me, Lord, only with your power will my life be all that it can be. We are filled up by Rick Wagner singing. Amen? Amen. Wow. That's fun. Will you come back again? It's in sing prayer and praise. We can do it as a congregation. We can do it as a congregation. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Cool. Tim's going to lead it. He's like, yeah. Look at that. So when those folks gathered on that uh, Passover day in Jerusalem from all those different cultures and languages and understood each other. This is what happened afterwards. They devoted themselves, according to the gospel of the, the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. That's how I feel when I gather with these teenagers, a sense of awe and wonder at their gifts. All who understood were together, and all things they had in common. All of a sudden, they, they felt like they were in community. And then they, selled, they sold all their possessions and goods and distributed their proceeds to all, any as had any need. And there was no more any poor among them. There was no more anybody in want or need, but they all shared with each other. That is just an amazing gift. And they say Jesus isn't a liberal. Oh, jeez. I, I thought there'd be more laughter. Uh, anyway, um, day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread in, at their home and they ate food with glad and generous hearts. And they praised God and having the goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. That's the word of God for the people of God. Amen. I like how Diane ends that with God is still speaking. Still speaking in our hearts. Because that's what happens when people gather in community. And when you're at a church for a long time, as I have been, it's um, to, to watch kids grow up from when they were toddlers to this moment is pretty amazing. To have walked and been with these kids their whole lives, for several of them, you know? It's just awesome to see their growth, who they become as individuals. And again, like I said, that they continue to teach me so much. I said earlier that part of the process of the faith formation program at Robbinsdale Parkway United Church of Christ is that we provide program and nurturing and storytelling and belonging experiences at the youngest of ages. And when they get to a point where they feel like they're connected to the church through their singing and through their music and, and all the different ways that they've been asked to be, be part of us, um, they become members of the church, and they are the same as any one of us. All members of one body, all with one vote. That's the congregational kind of way. And many of them at that time, in that middle school time, they're invited to youth group and mission trips, and many of them have been on trips with the, with the group. They've been to lock-ins um, and uh, overnights at the church, and they've slept on church floors and uh, church couches, and they've had, you know, um, they, they played sardines and captured the flag a lot, you know, and, and all that stuff happens as they build community. And then when they get to that high school age, when they, they're feeling kind of who they are, and most of them at that point are saying, I don't believe what my church believes, which is totally normal in the life of a, a young person, right? Totally normal in developmental understanding is that they're forming their own sense of faith. And we have covenanted not to teach them our faith in, in that middle school time, but we've said in high school, as they, as they develop their own faith, their own language, let us walk side by side with them and honor that process. Right? So it's not us and them. Do you see the difference? A lot of churches do middle school confirmation where you say, you take my faith and then you're done. That's been the, the way the church universal has been throughout the 20th century, and, and ecumenically throughout all faith experiences mostly in the Christian faith, is we're going to teach middle schoolers our tradition. And what we did in, in Robinsdale Park, which is a bold step, and several other churches did this with us, but just a few, 
said, no, we're going to wait until these kids are developing their own identity and walk side by side with them so then they can take that experience of a community that honors and loves them as they are out into the world. This day is more about these kids taking whatever, whoever they are out into the world than it is about saying, you're like us. We don't want a lot of kids like us, okay? Because that doesn't do good for our future, right? And it doesn't help new people feel like they're part of the community. One of the things we say about New Member Sundays all the time is one of the great things about Robbinsdale Parkway United Church of Christ is that our community gets richer with your added story, right? We're not, we're not just clones of each other. <laughs> But we have all of these individual stories, and these kids have found a way to express themselves. And, and hopefully, they'll come up and express their gratitude, their sense of connection and belonging to that idea. That this, this community will walk side by side with them throughout their lives, just like the Acts of the Apostles. They were awed at how, what it was like to be in community, to share with each other. And, and my hope and prayer as I woke up this morning was that you all would have a sense of awe of these kids at their connection to who we are and to who you are, that you are a more whole person because of their variety of expressing their understanding of faith. That's a powerful thing. It's why I love to worship on Friday nights at, on Shabbat services when I get the chance. Or I'll go pray with the Muslims at, at, at noontime on Friday because I get so much more awe and wonder of faith expressions, authentic faith expressions, and that's what today is about. That's, what, that's why Pentecost is a miracle. That's why the church is a miracle because when we experience that authentic expression of faith, we understand it. It doesn't matter the language. It doesn't matter the labels. It doesn't, it doesn't, all that cultural stuff goes away. We understand the expression of faith as true, and we honor those stories. And so I would like to invite the confirmation class as well as the adults, teachers, and guides to come up, and they're going to just take their turn to express their sense of belonging, commitment, gratitude to all of you. So come on up, the whole group at once. And, and, and I, we're not going to even do like, like, this may not even be in order. We can just take the microphone and go and do your own thing. Pass it on to the next person, then you, you get to go. Or maybe I'll call on people. Come on up, Peyton. Should I, should I call on you? Just line, line up in the order you want to go, and I'll just introduce you. Put some adults in there, too. Don't let the adults stand in the back. They're going to be in your mix. All we know right now is that I'm going to start, which I'm just, and Char's going to end, so... But here is Toby Beck. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Toby Beck, and I've been a member at this congregation for as long as I can remember. I've met several of my closest friends here, and I've met and talked with a lot of members of the church on you know, different youth group projects and events, um, being part of the band, um, after church services, and during other various social events. And this congregation has really been a large part of my life, and I'm very thankful for being part of this community and being accepted. I'm going to the University of Minnesota Twin Cities next year. Um, hi, my name is Caden Berry. I've been a part of the congregation for about 11 years now. Uh, I've also a lot of a lot of my friends here. I've been here for a long time. And probably say one of my favorite things, like favorite memories about church is going on the mission trip to Chicago and we went swimming at the Lake Michigan at like 11 p.m. It, it, was, it was really fun. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Oliver Fulga Murray. Um, I've been a part of this church community, I suppose, my whole life, uh, 18 years now. Um, I'd just like to say I'm thankful for accepting me and most importantly as well my parents. Uh, I've, yeah, uh, this church community has been a part of my life for 
all the time, and I look forward to continuing my faith uh, with the uh, say in the future. Uh, maybe not at this specific church. Obviously, I'll be in because I'm going to Concordia Moorhead uh, for college, but uh, we'll always be a part of my life. Um, and the many opportunities that I've been offered here, the different conference youth events and mission trips and walk-ins that T mentioned, um, I uh, can say with very clear confidence, I would not be the person I am today without this church. Um, thank you, Robinson Parkway United Church of Christ. I'm Phoenix Rock. Um, also known as the pastor's kid. Um, you all know me. I don't know all of you, which is probably one of uh, my biggest regrets regarding this community. I know that uh, being a part of it has changed my life. Um, half of my resume is related to this church, so thank you. Um, yeah, just thank you um, for accepting me, for uh, helping me along. You've all watched me grow and live and just struggle through everything since I was a little toddler transition. Um, thank you. It's a big extended second family type thing, and I'm grateful. Hi, my name is Paris Preston. I've been in the community for like three years. Uh, one thing I'm really thankful for is that I've been accepted by quite a bit of people, even though I haven't been here as long as these other people. Um, a really great memory I have is like playing sardines and stuff and just having fun. Hey, yeah, my name is Peyton Niley. Um, I am happy to be Jordy Robinsdale Parkway United Church today. I've been coming here since I was three, and I've always felt welcomed and loved. I really like that Robinsdale Church treats everyone with respect and welcomes everyone. I believe that everyone is equal and that hate has no place in our world. I am happy to join a church that teaches messages about love every day. So thank you, Robinsdale. I am Ken Beck, uh, one of the youth group leaders. I'm talking about gratitude and connection, so I'm very grateful that this church has given me the opportunity to work with the youth and serve on mission trips, take them on conference youth events or summer camp or, or uh, serve at the crisis nursery or, um, or just help members of the congregation move furniture so they can vacuum their carpet, you know. Um, so thank you for that and also for the connections too because this group is not a separate entity from the church. It's an integrated part of that and for that I'm also grateful. So thank, thank you. My name is Tracy Fugel and um, one of the things that I am so grateful for is the love of this scripture and for the love that the youth and all of you exude in this, and I learn from each of you. Before I share the scripture, I wanna say thank you to all of you for trusting me with your children and or what it is you're hoping will go out through me when I get to spend time with um, these wonderful youth. I wanna say thank you to each of you for all of the ways you've welcomed me and allowed me um, I have to give some special props to Oliver because it isn't always the most fun to have your parent go along on everything. Um, and I'm grateful for the um, love and respect we got to have of giving each other that space to grow um, as we may have, have been on this journey together. The uh, scripture that I want to share with you is Romans 12, 11 through 13. Ken won't be surprised, Char T. Some of you might remember this one. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope and be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. 
contribute to the needs of saints, extend hospitality to strangers. And this is where I get a little verklempt because having the opportunity to watch you each do your best with zeal to outdo each other in your hospitality, in your serving others, has filled my spirit in ways I could have never dreamed. Thank you again for letting me part, be part of this journey. I'm bringing up the rear, um, which sometimes happens on mission trips. Poor Ken gets stuck with me, and I'm chugging along it, and everybody's way up there. Um, I'm Char Mertz, and I've been um, going on mission trips, partnering at when we were Parkway, partnering with Robbinsdale since 2014. I'm the one since then that takes care of the pukey kids on mission trips. Um, and Toby, I have to say, I have called Toby every other youth name than Toby's own name. And every time I say, I'm sorry, I called you the wrong name, and Toby says, that's OK. Um, Asked he, how long do I have? He said, mm, maybe five minutes. And it, you can go on for a long time, you know, with these kids. Um, I can't imagine what it would be like in the midst of our pandemic to be a teenager and be stuck at home doing distance learning on a computer, not being able to see my friends, not being able to get together with them. And then on top of all that, the injustice and violence that's happened, not in our own city, but in our country too. And I don't know how I could be a teenager and take that in, but yet these kids did. And then, and then we say, oh, by the way, let's do confirmation. And we cram a year, what is it, a year usually? A year's worth of confirmation in a month. And these kids showed up, they were engaged, they were thoughtful, they told us what was in their hearts, and they are part of this community and they know that and they've said that and they've um, done such a great job that I, I don't know a lot of people here. I know these youth very well just from being together with them on youth events, but they have done a bang up job and they came and they put their hearts out in this confirmation class and not only should we be proud of them, but you should be proud of yourselves. Thanks. If you ever get asked to be on a mission trip with, with kids, please say yes. They're pretty amazing. Um, uh, and, and I got to say, this is the I've lost count of all the kids that I've helped through a confirmation process. It's hundreds over, over 15 years of ministry and uh, lots of stuff before that, too. Uh, but this is the first time I've had my own kid be part of that. And so, um, you know, we, we, saw, we talk about it takes a village, and it really does. And um, Morgan and I are both blessed to uh, have you all be part of Phoenix's village, and um, that, that Phoenix has all these other adults as well. Um, so thank you. Church, um, this is a time where we have this ritual, and the ritual of blessing uh, these folks is really, I, I hope you all consider yourself invited to this chair at some point in your life too, to be blessed, to be honored, um, to know these words are written for these kids to take with them into their lives, right? We may not see you much after this. You're off into the college world and seniors in high school and, and then into the world. But this will always be a home for you. And so we're going to ask each one to come sit here and receive a blessing. That I actually wrote down. So will Toby Beck and all those who he has invited come forward for this ritual. Ready to get a hand on Toby? Here we come. <laughs> yeah. Toby Beck, may you feel these hands of blessings on you and for you. We are gathered here in community to honor your presence and your story. We ask that the Spirit continues to be with you wherever you go, and that we promise you we will always have a home here for you, of love, support, and care in this place and with these people. 
Toby, you are filled with God's spirit, and may you continue to look to that spirit for guidance, for wisdom, for hope, and for joy as you continue your life in service. Amen. Will Caden Berry and all those who he has invited come forward for this ritual? <laughs> it's okay. You wore a hoodie on a sweaty day. Not a problem. Let's go to get some hands on here, folks. Caden Berry, may you feel these hands of blessing on you and for you. We are gathered here in community to honor your presence and your story. We ask that the Spirit continue to be with you wherever you go and that we promise you will always have a home of love, support, and care in this place and with these people. Caden, you are also filled with God's spirit. Continue to look to that spirit for wisdom and for guidance as you make your way in the world, filling it with the gifts that only you can give. Amen. Uh, we'll, do, we'll switch order. We'll do Paris since we're here, because we're, we're one family, right? All right, let's do it. Paris Preston, may you feel these hands of blessings on you and for you. We are gathered here in community to honor your presence and your story. We ask that the Spirit continue to be with you wherever you go, and that we promise you will always have a home of love, support, and care in this place and with these people. Paris, you are filled with the Spirit of God. Continue to look to that spirit for what you need. Ask for help when you need it, and continue to give your gifts, the ones that you can only give to the world. Amen. Amen. Nice job. Oliver Flugel Murray and all those who he has invited, please come forward. Get all these hands in here. Oliver Flugel Murray, may you feel these hands of blessings on you and for you. We are gathered here in community to honor your presence and your story. We ask that the Spirit continue to be with you wherever you go and that we promise you will always have a home of love, support, and care in this place and with these people. Oliver, you are filled with God. May you continue to look for God for help when you need it, mercy, answers, guidance, and whatever you need at the time as you continue to give your gifts, the gifts that only you can give to the world. Amen. Yay. Peyton Eiley and all those who you have invited, please come forward. And all those online in the wider family, I know you're there. <laughs> Good job, Grace. <laughs> Peyton Eiley, may you feel these hands of blessings on you and for you. We are gathered here in community to honor your presence and your story. We ask that the Spirit continue to be with you wherever you go and that we promise you will always have a home of love, support, and care in this place and with these people. Peyton, you too are filled with God's spirit. Look to that when you need help, ask when you need guidance, and keep giving your gifts, the ones that only you are able to give to the world. Amen. And last but not least, Phoenix Rock and all those who they have invited to come forward. <laughs> Do you want a microphone? Break into song? <laughs> there's got to there's gotta be a Broadway song in here for you. <laughs> Phoenix Rock. 
may you feel these hands of blessings on you and for you. We are gathered here in community to honor your presence and your story, your sacred story. We ask that the Spirit continue to be with you wherever you go and that we promise you will always have a home of love, support, and care in this place and with these people. Phoenix, you are filled with gifts that no one else can give. You have a personality filled with the Spirit of God. Continue to look for that when you need help and guidance and continue to give your gifts, your special personality to the world. Amen. Amen. <laughs> no. <laughs> Go sit down. You're done. Thank you. Another round of applause would be appropriate. I didn't know I was gonna, gonna get all emotional. Um, are we gonna sing first, or then we, or pray, or pray first? What does it say? Okay, let's sing then. Let us pray. Oh God, on this day of celebration, celebration of your spirit with us, celebration of these young people, celebration of all of us moving and activating, being active in your world, we thank you. And we ask that you continue to move your spirit across the world and in our hearts to open the ears of our heart, that we're able to listen with our eyes, our ears, our entire beings, to how we might respond best to you, to the big yes in the world. We pray for those who are in need, those who suffer, those who are unsure and feeling despair, those filled with anxiety or stress, those who live in situations of violence, pain, illness, poverty, and fear. Move your spirit that we may respond and be your hands and feet in the world for each other and for creation itself. Amen. Let us join together in the words Jesus taught us, using the words that are the most comfortable for you. Our Father and Mother who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. One last announcement, too. After the service today, um, there is cake in celebration of our confirmation people going out into the world and joining us, so you're welcome to have cake. And now we have time for the offertory. We're not passing things, just kind of to be extra careful. So while we sing, if those who wish to could come up and put money they're offering in the uh, offering plate. And we know that many people contribute by electronic giving and other forms of mailing things. And you're welcome to do that as too. The generosity that God gives us is always a movement of God to share with one another, however that is, church, volunteering, in our families, etc. So we thank you, and we want to say a big yes to offering and God and generosity in general throughout the world. Amen. As the Spirit moves you, I hope you will join me in this spiritual. Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Up on the mountain, my Lord spoke. Out of his mouth came fire and smoke. Looked all around me, it looked so fine. Till I asked my Lord if all was mine. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Oh, Jordan River is chilly and cold. It chills the body, but not the soul. There ain't but one train upon that track. It runs to heaven and right back. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. So let's pray. For the breath of life, for a life that sees, for insight to understand, for courage to witness, we give thanks, gracious God. The signs of your presence are everywhere. Your light and love surround us. May this offering witness to your grace and peace. Grant your spirit as a transforming power among us that inspires and enables our service. Amen. So as we stand and sing our closing song, we got to get used to this again, folks. We're going to be in the pews pretty soon. See if we can stand and sing, give some energy to A Song Must Rise. Uh, Kathy reminded you, inside is cake and uh, coffee afterwards for to honor these uh, confirmation kids. And, and go see them and, and thank them and, and have, have received their thanks and gratitude. This is a special day in the life of the church, and, and we are honored to participate in it. Let's get our song on. song must rise for the spirit to descend to a song must rise once again singing out god's praises and glory the faithful voices blend though a song must rise for the spirit to descend from the mountains and the valleys from the desert to the sea the song must rise once again, from 
the voices of the leaders and the voice of you and me. A song must fall for the spirit to descend. Oh, a song must rise for the spirit to descend. Oh, a song must rise once again. Sing out God's praises and glory. The faithful voices blend. Oh, a song must rise for the spirit to descend. From the poor ones and the rich ones, from the voice of young and old, a song must rise once again. From the free ones and oppressed ones, from the timid and the bold, a song must rise for the spirit to listen. Oh, a song must rise for the spirit to listen. Oh, a song must rise. Once again, singing out God's praises and glory, the faithful voices blend. Who oh, song must rise for the spirit to descend. From every house of worship, in every faith and tongue, a song must rise once again. From the country and the city streets, a new song must be sung. A song must rise for the spirit to descend. Oh, a song must rise for the spirit to descend. Oh, a song must rise once again. Singing out God's praises and glory, the faithful voices blend. Oh, a song must Rise for the spirit to descend. To descend. Woo! <laughs> so the appropriate benediction for this Sunday, as we prayed over these kids, that your story is blessed. Look at those hands of blessings on your head and your shoulders. That your story is blessed and sacred. And the same promise we offered the kids, that there will always be a home of love, support, and care for you. By the way, that is the baptismal vows, right? We promise our love, support, and care to every one of these kids. That our love, support, and care is with you, too. This doesn't happen just at baptism and confirmation. It happens all throughout your life. You are blessed. You are loved. That is the commitment of this community. And now you know once again that this is what we call home. And we are in awe of that experience, just like the very first church. Amen. <laughs>